Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to fit an 1140 cassette with your Shimano Ultegra RX 11 speed clutch rear derailleur. So I'll go ahead, I'll run through the steps. Right, so here we have the current setup. Obviously it's using the RX rear derailleur. It's got an 1132 cassette on it with a 5034 compact on the front. So, first step in installing the 1140 is obviously remove your chain from the bike and then remove your rear wheel right so the next thing to do remove the existing cassette so once you've got that removed then you can install your 1140 cassette. Now, on most of the hubs, what you need to do is install a spacer, like so. The cassette spacer. So, we'll put that on first, and then what you want to do is just put some grease around the outside if you haven't got any on there clean off the body and put some grease on there just a smear around here stop the cassette getting stuck on and then you can install your 40 cassette on there we'll see this is a Shimano XT 40 cassette So we get that on. Right, so there's the cassette installed fit the wheel back in the bike. Right, so refitted the wheel back in the bike. Now what you need to do is, you need your two mil hex head and locate your B screw, your B adjustment screw. So, which is just there. Now, on the outside here, so what you need to do is if you, because it had 1132 on it before, and now this is 1140. So what you need to do is hold the derailleur up so as the B screw is actually touching the stop just here. Like so. And then while you're holding it up, obviously we've got the clutch switched off doing this. It's just push down on the cage and then still touching here all the time at all times. And then push across. And as you'll see, because it was 1132 previously, it now hits the cassette over here. So the second one in, it's hitting like so. So it won't go past there, obviously. You need a gap for the chain to pass through, about a 7mm gap. So what you need to do is go to your B-screw, then turn it clockwise like so and then do the same thing again check it again As you can see it's gone down further now so it's nearly missing the cassette so you just turn that like so you can see it now goes right past the cassette 
but you need enough gap for the chain to pass through there cleanly otherwise it won't make it make the shift up to the 40 so I'm just going to adjust it so you've got a gap we can adjust it properly with the chain on but you need to be able to get up to the largest sprocket so just turn it a little bit more so as we know it's going to change like so so then you know by doing that you can actually make it up to that far without the top guide wheel there getting caught up in your cassette so now what I'll do I'll just pop the chain back on and then we'll have a look at it then right so when it comes to the chain what you'll need to do is if you purchase a new chain just for the 40 setup and then you can revert back to your old chain when you want to put the old cassette back on so we got the two comparisons here side by side the chain obviously like I said it was 1132 originally and now it's 1140 and if you see there the chain's that much longer now so one two three four and obviously each one had a quick link on that as well to add on to that but the actual links of the chain it's that much longer now than it was with the 32 on it so as you can see you'll need to add a bit onto your chain or have another chain and use one for each cassette is the easiest thing to do so I'll go ahead I'll get this back on the bike right so if you want to know how to size up a chain to fit the new cassette then what you want to do is put the chain around the inner chain ring at the front and the smallest at the back your 11 at the back there and then get the ends of the chain now if you're going to be running a quick link then you need to add in obviously the quick link if you're not going to be running a quick link and you're pressing the chain together the new pin obviously you need a male and a female end of the chain so do is if you get both ends and pull them together see I still need to put a quick link in there so if I just get I'll just get that and just put it on like that just to show you now what you want is you're looking at the rear derailleur now when you join the two together you want some tension on the rear derailleur here you don't want it look like where it is now that's no good because obviously it's let right off there's no tension on it so your chain won't have any a lot of tension on it just be slack like so you just need it so it just takes up the slack there so there's tension on it so you just put somewhere there is fine you don't need to go right down here because obviously as you go up the cassette at the back the derailleur is going further and further forward you just end up snapping the derailleur off it just go dead right round in the end so you just need it so as it literally takes up the slack like so and then so you just pull the two chains together and then you just mark up where they're going to join as long as it's taken up the slack off of it then you can mark the chain there and break it at the appropriate link if you need to shorten the chain at all with the chain tool that's just one way of doing it simple way to size it up right so I've got the chain back on now as you can see now what I'll do is I'll just run it up to the 40 at the back there just so we can make any adjustments if need be to the B screw as you see that's pretty good on the B screw and what I mean by that is you need a clean gap there between the two jockey wheels so by adjusting the B screw just all in that gap there so obviously if you turn it anti-clockwise you're making the gap smaller and clockwise you're opening the gap up so you want it so the chain's passing cleanly through and it's not getting interfered with as it comes off of the sprocket 40 tooth onto the guide wheel 
So that's to be clean coming off of there. And a nice line. So it's coming off cleanly like that. Otherwise, if it doesn't, then you'll get sluggish shifting on the cassette. So once you're happy with that adjustment, then you go ahead and check your gears up and down, run through them. What I'll do is I'll shift up to the largest at the front. So that's now on the 50 tooth at the front. And obviously you're not going to go very high, you're not going to go right up to the 40 tooth on road conditions because it's cross chaining too much, but I'll just move it up there anyway, just to show you. But it will actually go there, like so. Right, so there's the install complete there. Now, I haven't touched any screws other than the B screw. That's all I've touched. The high and low adjustment screws, hex heads, haven't been touched. Obviously the bike had a cassette on it before, 11 speed, so it doesn't need any adjustments made to those screws. All I've done is adjust the B screw so as, like I showed, that the guide wheel misses the 40 tooth on the back, like I was showing earlier. That's the only thing we've done. And obviously resizing your chain, which I showed, that's all the things you have to do. And like I said, you can keep one chain for the 40 tooth, and then if you want to put the 32 back on, for instance, or whatever you had before, then you can keep your other chain for that. Right, so there's the steps complete for you. So hope you found the video helpful. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more cycle-related content. Till next one, ride safe, and I'll see you then.